Hello there, my name is Cody Husak and I want to introduce you to my golf fitness series. My goal here is to take fitness and bring it to the golf course. What we're going to do here is we're going to run through simple exercises that you can do at home that will improve your golf game. The main focus of these exercises are going to be in three categories. One is going to be flexibility, two is going to be strength, and three and most importantly is going to be working on your golf posture. These three things can help improve your game and help you shoot lower scores. So let's get going. In this first episode, I'm going to walk you through some simple exercises. We're going to start with a warm up, and then we're going to move into isolation movements, and then we're going to move into the third, third phase, which is compound movements. The reason why we're doing this is very simple. First, we're going to warm up to make sure that we get the blood flowing. It's never a good idea to start a fitness program without warming up first and getting the blood flowing. Uh, muscles that are cold are prone to injury and the last thing I want to do in any of these uh, routines is hurt you. Second, what we're going to do is we're going to do isolated movements. It's important to do isolated movements to strengthen the muscles that we're focusing on to ensure that we have the strength to do the compound movements. We're going to do the compound movements at the end after you're well and warmed up and you have already worked on some of the isolation movements to increase your strength. If at any time you feel like, like you are having pain, I want you to stop. Alright, so for episode one, I want to point out the different equipment that we're going to be uh, needing. You may already have this at home. If not, uh, you can find this at almost any sporting goods store and they're not very expensive. Um, first off is some uh, resistance bands. I have two different tensions here. Uh, you may only have one tension and that's fine. Uh, the thing that I wanna point out is there is an exercise that we're gonna be doing that I definitely prefer a very low tension band. Um, I will point out that exercise when we get there and let you know the rationale. I'll also show you some modifications that you can do with stuff that you already have at your own home if you don't already have uh, fitness bands or if your resistance bands are only one tension and it may be too heavy for that move. So I will alert you when we reach that one. Uh, the second piece of equipment I'm going to be using today is a door attachment for my resistance bands. Uh, you can often find these sold with the resistance bands, sometimes they're sold separately. If you have any questions about where to get these, please let me know. I will be more than happy to help you. Uh, there are a couple exercises that we need these for. Um, I will let you know when we get there and I will try to show you modifications that you can do. Uh, the last and most exciting is a golf club. Uh, it doesn't really matter which golf club that you grab. Um, for limit of space here in my house, I grabbed a seven iron. A uh, driver just wouldn't work. The only club that I would say do not grab is your putter. The exercise that we do uh, in this is going to be a posture exercise and your posture with a putter is going to be different than all your other clubs. So that's a very specific uh, golf club in your bag. So I would say anything from like a seven iron probably to a wedge would be most appropriate in your home uh, and please don't break anything. All right guys, so to start the uh, warm up here, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do some simple jumping jacks. You can either do full jumping jacks or half jumping jacks, doesn't really matter. The, the uh, emphasis here is we wanna do a cardiovascular move that's gonna get the blood flowing. So let's get going. One. thing we're going to do is we're going to do some arm circles. We're going to make them nice and small. We're going to do 10 in each direction. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We're going to reverse it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, and ten. All right, now we're going to grab our golf club and we're going to do some leg swings. The purpose of this golf club is you're going to put it in the hand that you're going to swing your leg and you're going to just swing your leg to your comfort, swing them back and forth. One, two, three. This works the hamstring, also stretches the hip flexor and the quad. Do three more on this side. All right, we're gonna switch sides. Getting that good base here. We're not leaning on the club, but we are using it there as a stability, just something to hold on to. You can do it with no club, but that requires a little bit of balance. So we're just gonna have our foot next to our club and we're gonna swing. All right, now the last thing that I want to do to warm up is we're going to focus on our golf posture. This is twofold. So we're first going to be working on getting into the correct posture, which is important. But the second thing is, is I really want to train your mind to think about the golf posture while you're doing all these different exercises. I'll try to cue you to, to show you different, different aspects of each exercise and how they're help promoting you stay in this position. Uh, a golf, a appropriate golf posture is extremely important and it can help influence your whole swing. So let's get going on this. So I'm first gonna do it from a side view. Uh, so to get into this correct golf posture, you're gonna hold the club perpendicular. You're gonna take your normal golf uh, grip and you're gonna hold it parallel to the ground. Now when you hold it parallel to the ground, you're going to feel some weight start to fall on this club. The moment that you feel that weight, I want you to start from perpendicular to parallel. Once you feel that weight, I want you to follow it with your chest. And what that's going to do is it's automatically going to have you bend your knees and have your torso fall with your chest. Most people when they get into a golf position is they just they, they stand into it, they take their club, and they're ready to go. See how this position, although it feels comfortable, is not the same position as this. So I'm going to walk you through that one more time. What we're going to do is we're going to take the club perpendicular. We're going to let it fall to parallel. Once it falls to parallel, you're going to feel that weight. And when it's at parallel, you're going to fall with your torso and chest. That's going to put you in a very good golf position. I'm in a very athletic position. If we were playing in basketball, this would be an excellent position. Um, and, and you can see the butt end of my club is right at my belt buckle. I have a good amount of bend in my torso, and I also have some great knee flexion, which is going to allow me to move freely throughout the golf swing. So let's do four more of those. So what we're going to do is hold them per Hold the club perpendicular, let it fall to parallel, and follow it to the ground. You see that my arms are nice and relaxed. My, my weight is over the balls of my feet. I have good knee flexion, and I have good torso flexion. I'm going to do this two more, three more times. Let it fall. Once it's there, we're going to follow it to the ground. Two more. Parallel. And then let it fall to the ground. From perpendicular to parallel and then we're going to follow it with our torso to the ground all right all right so now that we finish our warm-up we're going to go right into the workout so the first move is going to be a overhead shoulder press so if you have the resistance bands it's going to be really simple all you're going to do is just going to step right into it you can either step into it with one foot or you can step into it with two feet I'm going to step in with uh, two feet. I have my medium resistance band. If you only have one resistance band, you can hold your legs wider for more resistance or just step on it with one foot for less resistance. All right, so to do the shoulder press, we're going to bring these up to the shoulder and then we're going to extend overhead. 
just like that. We're going to isolation hold it at the top and make sure that we're using good form. So here we go, let's do 10. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to show you a side angle here. Six, see how my knees are flexed? Seven, my abs are engaged, keeping my posture. Eight, nine, ten. All right, so the second movement is going to be a simple squat. There's a lot of ways to do an incorrect simple squat. I'm going to show you the right way to do a squat. So I'm not going to use my resistance band here for a moment. I'm going to show you here on a side view. What I want you to do is focus the weight in the heel as you're going down, almost feeling like you're falling backwards. So it's going to be just like this. See that my legs are parallel. My knees are never over my toes and the weight is located here in the back. Then I'm going to press up. Notice that my back is also in that nice golf posture that we talked about. I'm not leaning forward. I'm not standing straight up. I'm really keeping in that posture, letting my torso fall with my chest. The incorrect way to do a squat is this. Don't do this. Put strain on your, uh, put strain, a lot of strain on your knees. Would be to bend forward, having the weight in the toes, you feel the heels come up and you can see all that weight is right here in my knees. That's really not good for you and not what I recommend. So we're gonna grab our resistance band. You can do it here with just body weight if you'd like and we're gonna do 10. So make sure that you're using that good form. I like shoulder width uh, with, my, with my feet. You can go a little wider if you want. I don't prescribe going much narrower than shoulder width. So we're gonna do 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so for this next move, we're gonna be here on the ground. Um, I've added a mat just because my gym floor is a little hard. If you're on carpet, you might be okay. Uh, if you don't have a mat, just simply take a towel and fold it up a few times and use that for some uh, extra cushion. So we're gonna be doing the Russian twist, which is a simple core move that's gonna help your rotation and also your back stability. It's gonna, it's gonna strengthen this core region that is both on, in the front in your abdominals and also in the back, in your lower back, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our heels firmly on the ground we're going to fall backwards to about a 45 degree angle. We want to keep that good posture. You don't want to round the back. We want to keep the posture up. And we're going to do 10 of these on each side. So we're going to rotate to one side, then rotate to the other side. So that's going to be one. Let's do 10. One, two, just a little pause on each side. Three, four, five, six. Make sure you're keeping that posture. Seven, and that's the most important part. Eight, make sure you're rotating those shoulders. Nine, don't want you just simply moving your arms from left to right. And last one. Good job. All right, so this next move, I'm gonna be using the low tension resistance band. Uh, if you don't have resistance bands, what you can do for this exercise is just use um, any, anything from like soup cans to uh, like a water bottle. I would not recommend using anything more than five pounds of weight. Uh, once you start going over that weight, because the rotator cuff is such a small uh, area in the shoulder, 
you start recruiting some of your deltoid and that's not the uh, focus of this exercise. We really want to isolate that that rotator cuff that gets uh, in your golf swing when you're transitioning from the top to the bottom. The rotator cuff really does get uh, a lot of pressure on it. So we want to make sure that we're rehabbing it before it gets hurt. So I'm only going to step in with one foot on this resistance band. I'm going to take the, uh, the handles, keep them in front of me. I'm going to raise my elbows to parallel with my shoulders and I'm going to rotate up and down. Up and down. Let's do that 10 times. One, two, this is also called the scarecrow because you kind of look like a scarecrow doing it. Four, five, if you feel pain in your rotator cuff, I want you to stop. The, and just use lighter weight, and you can actually just do this without any weight, and it still works the rotator cuff. Like I said, the rotator cuff is not a big muscle, so you just need just a little bit of movement, and that'll do it. All right, so this next movement, I'm not gonna use a resistance band at all. There is a way that you can use a resistance band. Um, I'll show you here at the end. Uh, but what we're gonna be doing is just a simple forward lunge. Uh, with the limited space I have here, I'm just gonna take one step forward, turn around, take another step the other way. And I'm gonna show you the correct form. So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna start with my right leg going forward. I'm gonna step forward. I'm gonna, this is the lunge position. Notice that my, my knee is not over my toes. I'm not lunging forward like I'm going to go for a run. I'm just here in a nice position. I have a good posture over that left knee. We're going to rotate, go to the other side. Again, stepping forward, making sure I'm in that good lunge position. Knees over the ankle, not over the toe. We're going to do that 10 times. So here we go up just hold it there for a second two three four five six Seven. Again, focus in on that good posture. We don't want to lean forward with a slouch back. We want to make sure that we're keeping that posture, focusing on the, the aspects that keep the torso nice and tall so that when we get into that golf posture, we know what that feels like. All right, one more each side. And good. All right, so the last move in this uh, isolation uh, phase of the workout, we're gonna be back on the ground here and we're gonna be doing bicycle crunches. So there's a couple aspects that are important about the bicycle crunch and I wanna point those out now. So to do the bicycle crunch, you're gonna be flat on your back. You're gonna have your knees here at a 90 degree angle. You're gonna extend one of them out straight. You're gonna take your hands next to your head don't pull on your neck. You don't want any strain on the back of your neck here. And you're going to rotate to that opposite knee. And then switch. And then switch. And then switch. So this is really, this is really simulating a golf swing. This is you rotating uh, and going through the swing. So uh, let's, do, let's do 10 together. So five for each side. Here we go. We're going to extend one leg, connect with the opposite knee, one, two, three, four, and five. If you can do more, go ahead. Uh, we just did ten, and we're going to move on to the next, next move. All right, guys, so for this next part of the exercise, we're going to be using the door attachment. Uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, install this into the door uh, real quick. First, you want to make sure that you're examining your uh, resistance bands, making sure there's no cuts or nicks. 
especially when you start attaching it to the door, you're going to be standing farther away. You don't want these to start flying in your face. It doesn't feel good. I've had it happen. Don't, don't let it happen to you. Um, I think one of the important aspects of using these door attachments is to use it on the hinge side of the door. That way if someone opens the door, uh, not knowing that you're working out on the other side of the door, uh, it won't fly out of the door uh, as easily as if you put it on the door side. So we're just going to feed this through the open space and I'm going to close the door completely, locking it into place, making sure it's stable there, making sure my door is not going to open on me as well. Um, so there I got a nice tension on the door and that is not moving anywhere. So. For this exercise, we're actually going to put it a little bit lower. We're going to put it about, about to the bottom hinge. And again, make sure that that door is really closed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold both handles. I'm going to get into a good golf posture in which my knees are braced, my torso, uh, just, like, just like when we got in that golf posture earlier where we held the club perpendicular, let it fall, and and uh, let that torso fall with our hands. So this is a very good golf posture. I'm now gonna simulate that while holding on to these resistance bands just like this, okay? So to do this move, which is gonna simulate a full golf swing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our right hand, we're gonna rotate our shoulder so it's perpendicular with the, uh, the door attachment, and this hand's gonna be all the way back. We're going to do that 10 times. One, two. Also, feel the weight transitioning to that back foot, kind of like it would on your back swing. Obviously, if you're left handed, you can start with the left hand to feel that weight going to that back foot. And we're just really working on that rotation. You're going to feel your right oblique start to activate help carry that club to the top of the swing. And if you keep doing this, you're gonna feel a lot of strength at the top of your swing. All right, that's about 10. Take a breather, and we're gonna do 10 on the other side. Once again, we're focusing on that good golf posture, and we're gonna rotate through. You can even let that back foot release just a little bit like it would in your golf swing. So it's like you're, you're following through. And if you actually see, my right hand is in a perfect impact position. So we're really simulating that golf swing right here. And we're activating that left oblique, which is going to make you feel like you have a lot of control in your golf swing. Okay, one more. So that exercise alone, I really like because it really brings in that full golf swing. You're going to feel a lot of freedom in this middle section here because you're working on the muscles that carry the golf swing. All right, so I want to show you a quick modification if you don't have the door attachment. Like I said, I, I prefer to do this movement with the door attachment. But it is possible to get a very similar movement without the door attachment. And I'm going to show you that here. So the important aspects of this is that I'm going to use my opposite leg for whatever arm I'm using. So I'm going to start with my right arm. So I'm going to, I'm going to step into my resistance band with my left foot. So I'm going to get into a lunge and I'm going to rotate out with my right arm. So see, I'm still getting very good rotation. I'm still strengthening my oblique here on the side and I'm just rotating away from that knee. To switch to go to the other leg, I'm gonna step into it with my right foot, making sure that I'm focusing a lot of energy on my heel where I'm stepping on the band, and I'm gonna rotate with my left arm going through. So, you know, the disadvantage here is that you can't use your feet as much to kind of simulate the weight transfer that would be in your golf swing but it's still a great way to uh, feel that exercise, feel that strength, and feel that width. Uh, the last way that you can do it, if you have uh, maybe some dumbbells at home, 
or if you're using a water bottle or some weights, you can still do it with weights in your hand. What you're going to do here is you're going to get into that really good golf posture, almost exactly how you would get into the golf posture with your golf club, and you're just going to rotate with that weight. I only have five pounds here. That's a pretty good, pretty good weight for me. I can feel that weight transfer happen. I can feel that strength in the oblique. I can do both arms. I do recommend holding weights in both hands so that you can really feel that, that spot to rotate around. And you can do it with weights. So there are two options to uh, modify this one if you don't have the door attachment and uh, it can easily be done with weights. All right, so this next movement, I'm gonna use my medium tension band, and we're gonna combine the shoulder press and the squat that we did in the first isolated movements into a compound movement here in the squat thrust. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, step into it with both feet. Once again, you can step into it with just one. You're gonna have less tension on the squat this way I'm going to have tension both on the squat and on the thrust. So what we're going to do here, we've got to make sure that we're still using our good form when we're doing our squat. Make sure that we're letting that weight go to the back of the heels. We're squatting in a good position and then we're going to explode up. So one more time I'm going to demonstrate. We're going to go into a squat position and explode up. So this is really working on explosive energy using the ground to provide our energy and this will help uh, with your downswing produce more ground force which you hear them talk about on TV all the time with the big drivers like uh, Dustin Johnson and Bubba Watson. I might not be able to give you that much distance, heck I can't even hit it that far, but I do know that this ground force will help you hit the ball farther than you ever have before. So let's do 10 together. One, two, it's important to reset in between each one. See, I bring it back to my shoulders before I squat down. Four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. So for this next movement, we're going to go, uh, grab our golf club again, and what we're going to be doing is a reverse lunge with a twist. This move takes a little bit of practice, uh, but if you focus on that lunge that we worked on earlier, all we're doing is instead of stepping into the lunge, we are stepping back into the lunge. So I'm going to show you uh, a couple angles here, and then we're going to do ten together. So what you're going to do to step into the lunge is you're going to, I'm going to first step back with my right foot. I'm going to step back, get into that good lunge. My knee is over my ankle and I'm going to rotate towards the knee that I have in front. Okay. So I want to get my shoulders perpendicular. I'm right at the camera and I want to get it as close to parallel to that knee as I can. I'm going to switch legs, rotate to the other side. And what we're doing here is we're really strengthening the abdominal muscles, the glute, and we're really making sure that when we're doing our golf swing, we can stay in our golf posture. So here it is from a different angle. I'm going to step back into that lunge, rotate towards the knee. Step back into that lunge, rotate towards the knee. Okay, we're going to do that 10 times, five each side. There's one. Two. get into that lunge and then rotate don't do it at the same time I get into my lunge and then I rotate I get into my lunge and then I rotate I get into my lunge and then rotate do two more I'm good <clears throat> all right so this last movement we're gonna be back here at the door attachment if you don't have the door attachment, unfortunately I don't have a modification where you can do this move. You're simply going to do the first move that we did in the compounds uh, phase, 
in which you're rotating your right arm and then you're stepping into the loop with your other foot and then rotating with your left arm. Uh, if you're using the dumbbells, I, you're, you'll get the uh, sense of how you can modify this one. Uh, but we're going to do the same move that we did earlier, only we're going to go through the full swing. So I'll show you here. So I'm going to back up to where I get tension. I'm keeping my good golf posture. I'm going to bring my right arm all the way to the top, bring it down, and then next I'm going to go with my left arm. So I'm going to show you one more time. I'm going to go right to left. And as you can see, I'm even moving my lower body like I would in a golf swing. So that's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. That's five. That's six. That's seven. Eight. Nine. In 10. So as you can see, this is a great way that you can simulate your golf swing, simulate a great golf posture without having to hit golf balls. So I wanted to thank you for joining me on this uh, fitness program. Um, I'm very hopeful to get some more of these routines out to you guys. Uh, I hope that you see that this is a nice basic routine one that can be done uh, at any fitness level and that you really see that these movements will strengthen your core, strengthen the muscles that you use in your golf swing so that come springtime you're ready to go. And if you're in your golf season, I hope that you can see that you can use this workout uh, in a very short amount of time, maybe after your round or after a practice session to really reinforce that posture the strength and the muscles that you're supposed to have, and you're ready to go each and every time you hit the links. So my goal is that uh, you use these to help strengthen yourself and help you shoot lower scores. But most of all, I hope that you prevent injury and are able to enjoy golf the way that you do. So to everyone, I wanna say thank you once again for joining me on this, and please subscribe to my page and uh, if you're interested in improving your health and fitness, please follow me on my other uh, social media accounts as well. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. You can find me at Scrubs, Squats, and Sand Wedges. Uh, there's a period in between each word. And I'd love to help you with your health and fitness as well. So uh, look forward to hearing from all of you. And I hope that you find this enjoyable.